Hello, welcome to Navigating OCL Resources to Guide Improvement. This is a recording of the session from the Directors of Special Education, DOSE Institute, held September 2022. I'm Natasha Menefee. I am the Guidance and Support Branch Manager in the Office of Special Education and Early Learning in the Division of IDEA Implementation and Preschool. When we hear the words guide and improvement, think about what comes to mind. What do those words mean to you? When we look at the definition, according to Webster, the word guide means to act as a guide, to direct in a way or a course. The word improvement means to enhance in value or quality, or make better. So if we put these terms in context for our session, OCL resources should guide districts to enhance the quality of instructional practices to produce successful outcomes for students with disabilities. This is our goal. So the question is, how do we get there? Let's find out. By the end of the session, we will answer three questions. First, how does OCIL develop and review guidance resources? Where do I find OCIL guidance and support resources? And how can I share feedback with OCIL about current and future resources? Before we dive into the resources that will guide improvement, let's establish what improvement means for your district. So take a moment to stop and think. What does improvement look like for your district? What resources does your district need to make these improvements happen? During our session at the DOSE Institute, we had an interactive Padlet. That Padlet is still available if you would like to click the link in the presentation or use a QR code to review some of the comments that were made by participants or add additional comments as this is still being reviewed um, as we go through the rest of the presentation, keep the things in mind that are listed regarding improvement. Look and listen for any resources or tools that will lead to the improvements that you seek for your district. So how does OCL develop guidance resources? Let's start at the beginning. It's important for you to know not only where to find guidance, but the process for development. This is important so you can have an understanding of where it all begins. So why is the OCIL development and review process important to you? There are three reasons I'd like to share. The first is transparency. We have revised our development and review process and want you as our partners to know what that process is. Then there's intentionality. We want you to know that the thought process and the time that goes into the development and review of guidance resources. And quality. We want you to know that the guidance produced and reviewed is quality because we have quality controls put in place. So guidance development starts with data. Data drives instruction in the classroom, and it is no different with the guidance. Some things we look at, is there data that supports a statewide need for the creation of a resource? Some of the data sources we look at are state consolidated monitoring, now known as risk focus monitoring, technical assistance, those are calls from our call logs or emails that are sent in, indicator data, and of course, stakeholder feedback. Throughout this session, I'm going to seek imp input from you. Um, throughout the session at the DOST Institute, there were opportunities, and I'll show you in this recording as well, opportunities for you to provide stakeholder feedback. Next, we ask some guiding questions. The guiding questions help us to know if we have clearly identified 
each of the following areas. The first is purpose. Why is the resource needed? The answer to this is directly connected to the data. And next is audience. Who will use this resource? Audience is key in the writing process, so we are sure that we write for the intended audience. Timelines. When is the anticipated completion date? What is currently happening that will impact the development and release of the monitoring of the resource? Is it something for monitoring? Um, are there priorities of current work? Is a resource needed for a specific time frame, such as the beginning of the year or end of the year? Has something happened, such as a worldwide pandemic, that may cause us to need to create guidance? So timelines and the time of creation is important. And then there's the format. How will the information be presented? It's important to note that guidance is not always a document. Sometimes it can be a one pager. It can be an instructional video or a toolkit. There are often times that the content itself will drive the type of format or will cause a change during the development to the format of guidance. So now that the project planning has taken place, we'll look at the project team. The project team is who is needed, whether that's an internal or external team, and what will they, what will they do on the team, excuse me, what will their roles be? So let's look at the first two roles. The first is facilitator. The job of the facilitator is to keep the project moving and within the timeline. They coordinate meetings, and times of meetings for all team members, and they ensure that there's engagement and equity of voice from everyone on the team. Then there's the author who brings the guidance to life in written form. They write for the intended audience according to Kentucky Department of Education standards and use regulations and resources to support the work. Our editor is responsible for the review of the completed work. Our editor does not participate on the team, so they are reading the work from a fresh perspective. This is a part of the quality controls we mentioned earlier and the intentionality to providing you quality. And then there are our experts and our researchers. They provide content knowledge to the team. They research regulations for the project. They pull resources for the author and support the work of the author in the guidance development process. Once the guidance is developed, it has to be prepared for project publication. Our project publication procedures speak to the intentionality and quality that we have in place in order to produce high quality resources for you. First, a review is required. All projects are reviewed at the branch division, policy levels, as well as by the associate commissioner, and through the Kentucky Department of Education Communications Office. Once a guidance has been reviewed through all those levels and approved, we have a communication and dissemination plan. Where will the guidance be published and how will we let people know? And finally, our documents are published in PDF files to make it easily accessible, no matter what device the user may be looking at it from, whether that's a tablet, a cell phone, or a laptop, um, the PDF version makes it easier to access. So now let's look at some of the guidance that has been developed. We have collecting, analyzing, utilizing progress monitoring data for students with individual education programs developed earlier this year. And there's also a progress monitoring instructional support video to accompany that. This is a resource that is guidance. It's a support resource, but it is not a document. So it speaks to one of the examples that we had earlier. We additionally have House Bill guidance, the Kentucky uh, Profile of Transition Practices, and all guidance that you see in the recording and in the PowerPoint presentation. If they are hyperlinked, you have access to those documents and they have already been published. We also have SDI support for ARC members, 
the State Performance Plan Annual Performance Report Indicator Guide, our Kentucky Fast Facts for English Learners with Disabilities, our Special Education Reporting Manual, and the Kentucky Mathematics Toolkit to support students with disabilities. So this is all guidance developed, some of which has already been published and some of is in the process of preparing to be published. Now let's talk guidance review. The purpose of guidance and review is to ensure that LEAs are provided with up-to-date, accurate resources and have, and that we at OCL have a process in place to ensure its currency, accuracy, and usability so that you get high quality created resources. We look at three core features and the first one is legal. We look at the legal accuracy of guidance when we review it. We look at regulations to ensure that the links to regulations are up to date and accurate or if anything has changed within regulation. Next, we look at the usability. Um, we look at content vocabulary for the intended audience. Is it accessible? Are there any accessibility needs that need to be changed? So we look for usability features as well as timeliness. Have there been any recent changes to the topic since the guidance was previously issued? Have there been any Office of Special Education programs or federal regulations issued since the document was released that would require it to be changed? Or are there multiple indications from stakeholder audiences or a pattern of concerns that require information on this topic um, to be reviewed or adjusted? So those are some of the core features we look at when we review our guidance. The process for review of guidance. Upon completing the review of any guidance document or resource, the reviewer or team will assign it a status. And it could either be no update is needed, which means the document or resource was developed in the past one to three years and doesn't require updates or revision. There's a minor update. Sometimes there may be a major update or even an ur urgent update, which would indicate there may be a legal inaccuracy um, the information of the resource does not match current laws, an immediate update would be needed. Once the review is complete, the review team will notify the branch manager. And if needed, and when appropriate, the branch manager will schedule a meeting with the review team and talk to discuss recommendations and talk with the division leadership to determine the type of team that may be needed to complete the revision. So revision teams can be one of four categories. First, there's no team needed because the document will not be updated this year or, or there's no team required to complete the work. It could be a team within the Division of IDEA Implementation and Preschool. A team of employees will be able to handle those changes. It could be a KDE team which means that we would need input and expertise from other divisions within KDE or an external team where we would solicit the input from outside partnering agencies such as Kentucky SPIN or our CERTEX. So where do I find OSIL guidance and support resources? There are different options for accessing resources on OSIL's web pages. The first web page is the OSIL Communications and Resources web page. On this page, you'll find such things as the OSIL newsletter, LRP resources, also known as Special Ed Connection, the latest OSIL webcast, and related guidance resources. There's the IEP Guidance and Documents webpage. This page contains guidance documents for the development and creation of individualized education programs and is supported by the regulations listed. Some of the frequently used guidance are specific learning disability, guidance, the guidance document for IEP development, and the IEP and lesson plan development handbook. We also have the Guidance Resources webpage. This page contains various guidance, such as policy, procedures, and guidance for guidelines for compliance. Frequently used guidance on this page 
is the progress monitoring guidance and instructional video, the autism guidance document, and special transportation. Our instructional resources webpage contains a variety of resources to improve outcome for students with disabilities in the following areas. There's things such as academic and content, family engagement, specially designed instruction, universal design for learning, as well as administrator resources. We also have recently added to this page a section for English learners with disabilities. The Parent and Family Resources webpage contains a variety of resources to support parents and families of students with disabilities. You can find the family, Parent and Family Toolbox as well as Parent and Family Rights sections on this page. Sometimes guidance from OSEAL is posted on the Legislative Guidance webpage. This is a non-regulatory guidance page and is intended to inform school districts and other stakeholders about recently enacted legislature. We have two documents developed by OSEAL on the legislative guidance webpage, House Bill 44 and House Bill 563. Another quick way to find what you need is to simply go to the Kentucky Department of Education homepage and you can search in the toolbar located in the upper right hand corner of the page. You may also do a web search by typing in the name of the document that you are looking for. In addition to adding KDE at the end. This type of search will quickly bring the resource you're looking for to the top of the search results page. And again, is a quick way to find what you need. Another location for resources is the Kentucky Department of Education Director of Special Education One Stop Site. This site was designed specifically for directors of special education and directors of our regional technical assistance centers. On this page, you'll find several resources in one-stop setting. You'll also find archived editions of our News You Can Use emails and our OSEAL newsletters. So now, how can you share feedback with OSEAL on current and future resources? We'd like to know what guidance and supports do you need to improve instructional outcomes for students with disabilities? Which existing resources are working for your district? Which resources are unclear and need clarification? What guidance and supports does your district need that do not currently exist? So we want to hear from you. You have an opportunity to use the QR code or the link to this document. The links are still up and they're still live and we would love to hear from you and get your feedback. Thank you for watching this video regarding navigating OSIL resources to guide improvement. Should you have any questions, you may contact me at natasha.menefee at education.ky.gov.